Welcome to Inside the Women of Denver, where we talk with local leaders about their successes, failures, and lessons learned on the journey to success. I'm Crystal Covington, and today I'm here with Carla Cabaz, a certified core energy coach and trainer who helps ambitious women shed self-doubt and find their voice in order to lead themselves and others to success in their professional and personal lives. Carla, welcome to the show. Thank you, Crystal. So, that's a very, a very unique profile. So tell us a little bit about how you got started and you know what brought you to this point in your career. How I got started, um, it was just one of those random things, but not random. It was really a tug mm -hmm. that I had ignored for a really long time. I was doing interior design before and I loved yeah. it. Yeah. Um, doing very well at it. But I would find myself at night when I got home after work researching, um, going back to school to get my master's in counseling or coaching programs. Yeah. And I was always the kid in the neighborhood and the one in our family that people would come to when they had an issue or they wanted help trying to figure something out. Yes. So there was literally one day where I thought, I'm not sure how this is gonna play out or what I'm gonna do with it, but I'm gonna follow the nudge and just Go for it. for it. Yeah. You follow the, the energy. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes, I took follow the energy, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So what is one of the things that, I mean, it sounds like a really unique lifestyle to support other people and kind of, you know, give them their nudge and help them find their nudges. What is the thing that you love the most about the work that you do? I think it is watching the transformation and watching the ahas and yeah. see being able to see in people, you know, oftentimes we can't see our gifts because we're just so used to them that we we maybe downplay them or yeah. or whatever. And it's to me it's magnificent and it's so inspiring to be able to partner with someone to help them discover and get to really know, like and trust themselves mm -hmm. on a much deeper level. Yeah. Yeah. So you did a workshop that I really enjoyed. I, I left with a lot. I told you that. I, um, you. I said, oh, I'm, I was heavy in my mind with things to really reflect on. And a lot of what you talked about was leadership. And you went over a lot of different kind of energetic things that, we, that block us from being um, the best leaders that we can be. Can you share some of that and give a little advice about how people can really grow and flourish as leaders um, in, in their own lives, both at in corporate and then um, in their personal lives? Sure. So I, I would start by saying that I think we're all leaders, yeah. no matter what role we play in life. And we always have the ability to inspire ourselves and others, but it's a lot of it is mindset. Um, so, you know, we might feel victimized or that we're stuck and we don't have control over our circumstances. Mm -hmm. We might feel frustrated that we're not getting the success. You know, we know our potential's here, but our results are here. Yeah. We might find ourselves tolerating things for long periods of time mm -hmm. without even realizing it. And so, you know, the whole point of of it is that you have a conscious choice. I think that's really the one thing I would want everyone to know is yeah. we the biggest freedom we have is the freedom of choice. And so we have choice over our internal dialogue, our mindset, what's going on inside, and that's a direct reflection of the results we're gonna see outside as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what were some of those, what are some of the biggest um, I forget what you called them, but what are some of the biggest challenges that people struggle with in leadership and need to kind of work through? Well, one of the ones, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, is, was around success and failure. Mm -hmm. um, so, and within leadership, but it, it's really within life. So often, you know, something won't turn out the way we want it to. Yeah. So our expectation isn't met and then we go from zero to 60 with it. We globalize it and we make it all about us. It's not that, well, maybe that's just a stepping stone on the path and 
that it really happened for our benefit and it's an opportunity for growth. Again, there's conscious choice there. You can choose to perceive it as it's all about you and you're, you're a failure, or you can choose to perceive it as something about my plan was a little off and I need to go back and tweak it. Oh yeah, that's yes. a very different perspective to have about something. Right, um, so I think that was definitely one of the big ones. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say another trap that I see people fall into mm -hmm. is it's, it's really just not understanding their, their patterns, their blocks. Yeah. It's not having, it's like I said at the beginning, you know, getting to really know, like, and trust yourself. So it's really doing the inner work mm -hmm. as you are going out into the world, whether you're building a relationship, building a business, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. it's to always be doing that internal work as well. Yeah. That's been one of my biggest things as far as running um, a program that I put together. Um, it's Women of Denver, Inside the Women of Denver. <laughs> I'm talking about it like it's abstract, but yes, <laughs> that thing. <laughs> yeah, I put together something and then I didn't realize how much leadership had to go into it. Sure. And every step that I've taken with it, I had to do more inner work than yes. I did actual programming work and figuring things out, figuring out the structure and all that stuff. It's been more working on me yeah. than anything else. And I remember going to a workshop, um, someone invited me to, and one of the biggest things they said is, the more you invest in yourself is the, the more you will receive. So they, talk, they were talking specifically about business. So they, were, they had people stand up and they said, you know, how much have you invested in your business, in yourself? And these people would say these massive amounts of money. It was a very interesting scenario, but they all, you know, talked about these massive amounts of money that they put into personal training and personal development. And she'd say, how much money do you make every year? And it was like, boom, they, all of them were making massive amounts of money. And it really was a good demonstration to say, okay, not that, you know, not that I necessarily believe that everyone who puts a lot of money into all these classes and stuff is going to come out right. a millionaire. Sure. But it really is everything that you get is part of is is basically because of the investment you've made in yourself. Absolutely right. And so, because what that investment allows you to do is raise your level of consciousness or awareness around who you truly are. Mm -hmm. So it allows you to kind of eliminate whether it's old childhood baggage that we're yeah. carrying around or old stories, limiting beliefs all of that and anytime we're on our growing edge for example you starting this program and yeah. it, it we're gonna we're gonna butt up against that and, and we're put here I believe that we're here to grow and evolve mm -hmm. that the journey never ends that there is no finish line oh I love that there's no finish line so you uh, might as well yeah. enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough for, for ambitious people. We always are kind of like creating new finish lines. Okay, there's a new finish line. This is the finish line. I've actually hit up against that a few times. My first one was when I reached my, I moved to Denver, I reached my first goal and it was to be Mary Tyler Moore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And one day I was walking to work and I said, huh, I'm Mary Tyler Moore now. Now what do I need to do? Right. I need a That's new goal. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I make up these new goals. Okay, there's a new finish line. And then I hit the new finish line. I'm like, oh, what do I do now? <laughs> so, and I see that happen a lot, um, especially with women. It, and it's, you know, we go through life and yeah. check off all the boxes. But if our outer goals aren't connected to our inner drivers, you know, which is really our values, then we often hit our goal and we might be wildly successful yeah. but we feel that lack of fulfillment inside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what are your favorite tips for people who um, they want to be successful in life whether it be um, you know in their careers or in their personal life what are your favorite success tips to help them to build the life that they're looking for and be the best person they can be um, First and foremost, be compassionate with yourself. That's hard. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so important. Um, you know, and I don't believe that there really is anything a as failure. I really do believe everything's an opportunity for growth. So the more that we can be kind and gentle yeah. 
with ourselves on this journey, um, the better results we're gonna have. Yes. And um, I think another thing is to give yourself a chance because everybody feels fear or self-doubt, insecurity, whatever. It's just a natural part of life, but give yourself a chance in spite of that. Don't let that stop you. Beautiful. Thank you. And what about your, I want to learn more about you personally. So okay. we talked a little bit about your perspectives and how you support other people, but do you have any mentors or how do you kind of live your success and you know try to reach the the goals that you have for yourself i have a lot of mentors so i'm a big believer in support and i feel like i have professional mentors mm -hmm. i have a close circle of colleagues and friends and you know even my kids oh. are a big source of inspiration for me uh, on a daily basis so yeah, I'm a big believer in all of that. Nice. I love that your kids are an inspiration oh, they're huge. for you. It's huge. That's so big. Yeah. My friends and I joke that we should have our daughter, my daughter, kind of be our, our CEO or our personal trainer <laughs> <laughs> because she's so determined and, you know, just really good at, at doing what she says she's going to do. Yeah. and self-motivation it all just comes so natural to her <laughs> and then there's sometimes where i'm like oh, i need to borrow yeah. some of that <laughs> it made me think of this little kid there's this little boy that all his videos are going around he's got these massively successful motivational videos oh <laughs> i think everybody's probably at least run across one i don't think i've seen it oh my gosh this, it. he's a powerful little boy and he just tells you go do it whatever it is he's just commands <laughs> She's, it makes me feel like maybe she's like that. <laughs> oh, she is. Has this commanding And she calls me Carla, not mom, <laughs> too. So <laughs> I think that kind of adds to, the, to it. <laughs> she's a grown woman. Yeah. <laughs> she's 12. <laughs> so. Oh, well, she is a grown up. Yes. <laughs> so it's funny. Yeah. When I was 12, I thought 16 was grown up. Right. I'd say, oh, my sister, she's so pretty, and she's 16, so she's grown. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's funny how we, it just changes, right? I remember yeah. looking at people my age when I was younger and being like, they're so old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I asked my niece how old I was, and she told me, I think it was like 53. <laughs> she said, I think you're 53, right? right. <laughs> That's just only logical. <laughs> perspective right exactly <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit about your um, the challenges that you've been through in getting here because I know there had to have been some oh there were a lot yes yeah, so yeah. tell me about one of your big challenges your growth moments that got you to this point today of the confident woman that you are that supports other women <sighs> I'm I struggle to think of just one. Um, That's a good point. I think that, and this is just a constant process, but it's learning to d discern the voice of your inner critic mm -hmm. as illusion and as fear and as yeah. something that's there to try and keep you safe. So it means well, but it's really going to hold you back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think in the beginning, I was so enthusiastic and so inspired when I came out of my coaching program. And then I had this moment of, but what do I know? Oh. Or who am I to, you know, help or support this person? So it's working through, again, those types of the self-doubt, the insecurity, the fear that just naturally arises in all of us. And it's... Yeah it's meant to be there. It's an opportunity for us to go deeper. I like to use a skyscraper analogy. If you've ever seen a skyscraper being built, they dig a really deep hole in the ground in order to create the foundation to support the massive growth. Mm -hmm. So it's always an opportunity to dig deeper so you can expand upward. 
what you said was actually a hit right on the nail for me when I, <laughs> again, for when I started Women of Denver, there's actually a picture, there's a program called Impact Founder. They took a picture of you and they said, okay, you know, you founded something, now tell us your story. And it's kind of a story that is a challenge, but something that you're working to overcome. So you say it in an empowering way. And the story I have, so th this is literally in a, on a portrait on a wall in one of the buildings here in Denver. Oh. And it says, I just had a successful launch, but I'm suffering from the anxiety of it all. Mm -hmm. And really it was imposter syndrome. So I launched and I said, okay, um, anybody who wants to join this, come join me. And people did. And I said, okay, now what I do? Why did they, why did they do that? I don't deserve, why, why would they want to do something I made up? You know, I, sure. I, I, you know, so it was, there was a lot of responsibility in that. Yeah. And then I actually had some time where I was struggling with having to feel worthy of having this thing that people were looking to me to create great experiences for them. And I'm like, why me? Right. Well, welcome to the party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know I, anyone that probably hasn't felt that way at some point or another. And I think that that's, again, one of those illusions or lies that we have to understand that just because we think it doesn't mean it's true. We can feel that way even when we're being successful. Yes. Things are working out and we're saying, well, why is it working out? I shouldn't be, it shouldn't be working out for me. For sure. <laughs> well, and I, yeah, so we're always questioning, right? So it's, again, if we think about we're always on the journey, on the journey, on the journey, on the journey, it's, you know, what can you do to make the journey filled with ease and fulfillment and fun instead of being so focused on the goal? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, you've shared some really great insights. Is there anything that you really want to make sure you leave everyone with? Um, I would just say that I really believe that the quality and happiness and fulfillment that we experience in life is the sum total of the choices that we make on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So just make sure that you're making conscious choices uh, that benefit you. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Carla, for what you shared today and for being a really great, I feel like you have really great energy, so giving me great energy today. Oh, thanks, <laughs> yeah. Crystal. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thank well, you. thank you. And thank you for joining us. Always remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known. I'll see you soon.